I was standing in my jacket, uh, waiting in the line. I saw the first um, half-naked, kinky, 20s uh, dressed people walking down the stairs. I was like, wow, let me take my stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> Today's guest is Coco, an organizer of techno and kinky parties. That means that I spend way too much time in Kit Kat. You have a club mm -hmm. full of people in kinky attire and so if I'm in a situation of play and somebody new touches me, mm -hmm. do I want this person to touch me? Yes or no? I need to make a decision. Uh, my name is Coco, that is short for Constanze. I'm an event organizer of uh, techno events in Berlin, which I started doing in 2021 in the middle of Corona. You're a KitKat expert, Sisyphus explorer and Berheim novice. That is right. <laughs> What does that mean? That means that I've spent way too much time in KitKat, mm -hmm. realized that Sisyphus is a fantastic club and yeah. uh, I like Berghain, but it's something that I'm still saving for the future. You see, the thing about Berlin and the club culture and the clubs that yeah. it has is, of course, um, there's a lot to explore. Mm -hmm. And no matter how much you know and no matter how long you've been part of this yeah. culture, there's always more. There's always more. It's, it's a rabbit hole and there's always more to find out. Um, you say, well, you have been way, way much time in the KitKat. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? Like <laughs> when you started to go there to the KitKat? Um, I was actually thinking about this today, yeah. why I spent so much time in KitKat. And the thing was... Um, I wasn't in Berlin um, just before Corona. I was out of Berlin for, 40, for uh, three quarters of a year. Mm -hmm. And then I came back three days before the lockdown. So okay. I came back and I was like, yeah, Kit Kat. Yeah. And, <laughs> and there was no more Kit Kat. So Kit Kat was closed for, well, all the clubs were closed for yeah. a very long time. Yeah. Um, and then one year later, I started making events myself, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which also uh, happened to be mainly on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. So that was also no Kit Kat. So mm -hmm. it's only been recently that I've actually had time to go to Kit Kat. So that, that's really the reason why. How is the community? The community is amazing. The community is um is you see you have to imagine it's um you have a club mm -hmm. full of people in kinky attire and there is an incredibly positive vibe like mm -hmm. people really are uh inclusive, appreciative of each other. Um there's a lot of respect mm -hmm. between people. And it's, I personally think it's one of the nicest vibes in clubs. There's also a lot of people who um, say the opposite. They don't like the vibe so much. Um, for one, one group of people is uh, the ones that have experienced uh, the old Kit Kats before, because there were several uh, clubs okay. um, before the one that we know today. And... Um, It's, it was a very, very, very small club in the beginning and then it started growing every time it moved address. And uh, the club that we have now is very big and it's uh, between two and a half and three thousand people that fit in the club. Very and nice. it's, of course, not as personal as it used to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, on the other hand, you have um, people who are maybe not so experienced mm -hmm. with it. Knowing how to navigate a place like this and how to really work with consent and, you know, make yeah. sure that nothing happens to you, is it's important. It's important to, to really understand it in order to be able to have a good time. Yeah. Okay, you would say that it's a, a safe place. It's a big discussion. Is it a safe place? Is it not a safe place? For me, it's the safest place in the world. But then again, I have sufficient experience. And uh, well, I did grow up in Spain and, you know, uh, it's a little bit different in Spain uh, than it is here. Um, in Spain, it's normal that you leave the house and uh, you have guys uh, catcalling you mm -hmm. and, hey, wapa, you know, yeah. like... <laughs> <laughs> So that's that's really normal, which is not normal in in Germany. Like nobody does this, you know. 
Mm-hmm. So I I have a certain attitude that I already like have in my presence in my aura that um commands respect. Yeah, okay. You know? Yeah, when you grow up in a country where that is the norm you you learn how to defend yourself or how to set boundaries. Exactly. And when you arrive to a place like a sex positive party or a kinky party, you know exactly how to react. Exactly. Whether someone who has never experienced that before, it might be like quite shocking and say, oh, there's just a lot of perverts in those places. I imagine that is, that's what they say, right? That's that's absolutely right. And you see, um, I used to live in Barcelona for a long time mm-hmm. and... Um, I wanted to be able to move uh, alone. For example, if I want to go home uh, after partying, I want to be able to do that alone. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's something where I was running around Barcelona at four o'clock in the morning uh, by myself. Yeah. You know, you have to have a sort of <laughs> touch me and I yeah. kill you yeah. <laughs> attitude. <Exactly. Yeah. laughs> the events, the techno parties that you organize are kinky techno parties. Or sex positive parties. Um, there's the parties that I used to organize before. There were two types. One was a, n- a normal techno party, and it was actually mainly outdoor. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other one was a kinky party. Mm-hmm. So for us, it was super important to have both. To not just have a kinky party. Organizing kinky parties is fun, but it's also straining for the team. It's, you know, the component of um, having intimate relations on on a, on a party mm-hmm. puts a lot of pressure on the team, which means um, you always have to keep an eye on everything. You always have to. It, it's a whole nother organization okay. and and uh, managerial aspect to it. You can't just you know yeah, let yeah. things uh, happen. What uh, what inspired you to become involved in the kinky scene and to organize parties like that? Well, it, um, it uh, had to do with my uh, ex partner, um, who was a DJ, and uh, somehow the combination of the both of us um, made a club o- the club owner of of, of Insomnia um, ask us whether we want to organize a, a kinky party. Okay. Oh, okay. That's how how it happened. Yeah. And you had experience with kinky parties before that, or it was just your first experience? Not after? in organizing, but yes, in attending. What are the elements, or what it and, and what it consists a kinky party? What do you need to be aware of as an organizer and, and also as a attendant? There is a huge spectrum mm-hmm. of different types of kinky parties. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically. There is um, from kinky raves where you have people walking around in like, I don't know, their harnesses and their kinky rave uh, uh, clothes. Um, But it's not very sexual. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay? Um, This is one one extreme. On the other hand, you have parties where the music really doesn't matter and it's just about uh you know having intimate relations mm-hmm. so but on this scale there is a lot of different types of parties mm-hmm. um there are some parties that are more esoteric there are some parties that are more uh sensual there's some parties that are more about the rave um mm-hmm. some parties uh of course also for all orientations whether it's gay or straight or bi or whether it's for bdsm or fetish so there's dif- very very different types of parties and how is that how can you identify to which party do you want to attend um it depends on the person. I always say that the that a kinky party carries the signature of the maker. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's uh, f- for us in in our case, it's we wanted something nice, mm-hmm. c- kind of cozy, very good music, and uh, very sexual, but in a nice way, okay. you know. And it was funny because in the very beginning, um, I had there were the balance of men and women was always was is always a question, of yeah. course. Yeah. Uh, so at the very beginning, there were too many women, okay. which is 
it's okay. it sounds it's nice. It sounds great, but if women go go home uh, not not satisfied, that's like not the best. Uh, mm, okay, no, you will not get good reviews. <laughs> not so much. <laughs> then um, then w it was a moment where we had. Um, more too many too many men mm. at some point it like it, it got into a perfect balance mm -hmm. and uh, and also the audience the the guests started um, becoming more open and and really enjoying it and also what we did is that we always uh, made the club look very nice and mm -hmm. we always built something new something the decoration and everything yeah. okay mm -hmm. but what what would you say would be the right balance between men and women uh, it has to be a little bit more women or a little bit more men what would you say is the um, perfect balance so for example if you have a couples party mm -hmm. yeah um, you have the disadvantage that who the couples are always focused on each other, uh -huh. even if they're not necessarily a couple, but the it's the person whom they came with, you know. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's always nice to have a, a certain amount of s people who are single who are mm -hmm. happy to to you know play. Um, Play is an interesting word that is very used, also. Like, of course, as um, it makes it sound more more fun. It is, yeah, of <laughs> course, of, and it is, it is, it's, uh, it is, it's, it's an exchange of energy at the end of the day, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but the ideal, the ideal uh, mix is uh, usually a few, a, a little bit more men mm -hmm. than than women, but just a tiny bit more. Okay, interesting. Because it, I would have imagined that a little bit more women is maybe better. But okay, if you consider that some guys might be shy, then rather to have a bit more men. So I don't know. I'm trying it's, just to, uh, to run the logic <laughs> why <laughs> why a little bit more men is better. But yeah, that's the point that you mm -hmm. say is very interesting that if women go there and then they end up unsatisfied for that night that that's, makes a bad reputation which for a guy is almost like pretty normal to go back home yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there is no dis disappointment <laughs> there's no disappointment it's just another Saturday <laughs> <laughs> that is there's something very true to that yes yes absolutely yeah. well you say uh, that it's about the signature uh, of the of the organizer what would you say is your signature it's um I think for my signature I'm going straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah, well um how do I describe my signature? Um, it was definitely a very beautiful pretty wild orgy last time. And um I'm very very happy that uh I the thing is for me it's not just about the the sexual component mm -hmm. for me it's um there's uh, the whole culture the whole club culture that comes with it um it's important to also you know teach this and pass this on to people mm -hmm. you know there's a question of um sexual health and safety um of how to how, what you need to do how to handle uh, uh things in certain situations um the topic of uh having being monogamous or uh being in an open relationship, so to say, mm -hmm. it's also very important because this you can only do this if you show respect to every single person, to every single person that you have anything with. Mm -hmm. You need to show respect. I think in one of the well, you made a short video on I think on uh, on on Instagram, and also I think previous to to this uh, podcast recording, we were having a phone call, and you mentioned something about. Uh, a Roman orgy that that imagine mm -hmm. that is is that the vibe that you wanna wanna bring into your parties? Imagine a Roman orgy. P picture the a Roman orgy. I mean, it's not about gladiator uh, costumes. It's about the thought of it, and it, it's about translating that into our day and age. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people like that idea. Mm -hmm. Like a very yeah, because I can imagine like in a, some sort of uh, palace and everyone like free and you have maybe food and drinks and everything is like very open, not pervert I would say, but like every, everything very 
just let it flow. That's right. That's Very right. Very lavish, and maybe somehow hedonistic. It's hedonistic. Um, important thing to know about hedonism. Uh, hedonism is not just about indul in, uh, indulging in, you know, pleasures uh, in a senseless way. Hedonism has a lot to do with being prepared and with being able to really enjoy the moment when when you can. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's yeah. Hedonism is. Is a very intelligent way of uh, appreciating and enjoying the pleasures of life, and it's not just about indulging, um, you know, in in a senseless way and in an mm -hmm. unhealthy way. If you live in Germany, you have work less than twelve months, or if you have bought a new computer, or if you have to travel more than thirty minutes to your workplace. Well, maybe it's worth filing your tax refund in Germany because I think you might receive a very good tax return. I know that we think that it might be very complicated or some people are even scared of the Finanzamt, but it doesn't have to be that complicated. Everything depends on the tools that you're using. For example, I use Wundertax. With Wundertax, you can complete your entire tax return online. What's more, you can calculate your potential refund See what deductions you're eligible for and determine whether it's worth filing before you even start. For example, I did it last year and I got 500 euros back. And some people even say they got more than 1,000 euros. So if you go to gutentag.wundertax.de, Wundertax like Wondertax but with a U, they even have the website in English so it will be easier for you and it will take you around 20 minutes or even less. Also, that's the best way also to support this podcast. gutentag.wundertax.de Thanks for our sponsor, Wundertax. And now let's continue with the conversation. Nowadays, to find the, the, the limit, what is consent and when is not consent? Or when is a, when do you need to ask for consent without making it too unsexy? Okay, well, you need to always ask for consent mm -hmm. uh, one way or another. And um, if you're touching somebody and your hand is being pushed away, that's also a... You know. No, I don't give you consent. Mm -hmm. um, it, without without having consent on a party, you you can't you can't really create a safe vibe. I, however, believe that the most important thing about consent is you yourself making a decision. So, if I'm in a situation of play and somebody new touches me. Mm -hmm. I need to, I, I take this moment and I think about it myself. Do I want this person to touch me? Yes or no. I need to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Otherwise, I can't communicate it clear to the other person. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, so just letting something happen and then not really wanting it, that's not, that's not clear. You have to create clear circumstances. And uh, the most important thing is, is that you yourself know because then you can communicate it to the other person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, um, crossing consent is just not an option. If if it's a no, it's a no, and it's you have to accept it. Okay, did it ever happen that somebody is not following this consent, and then which actions do you take in the events? Uh, yes, of course, it happens, and uh, either the person understands that uh, this that he or she is crossing crossing a boundary, mm -hmm. and if that person does not understand, mm -hmm. then that's a moment where this person should be leaving the club. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, event organizers, and, and I think also you you probably also have that you have like uh, a. Um, Awareness team, right? Sometimes yes. in place, people <clears throat> yes. who is like monitoring that everything is uh, happening under the rules of consent. And mm -hmm. if you see something, these persons will get the security guards or something, right? Exactly. So a good a good awareness team, um, and there's many parties who have very good awareness teams. Yeah. They are constantly checking on the people. So it could be a scenario where you have a girl who is maybe over intoxicated and she has uh, a man or even several people on top of her and uh, you don't, you know. That's... Yeah, I wanted to touch that topic because sometimes yeah. in these places there are people who take uh, substance uh, and alcohol and sometimes they are not able to consent. 
how how do you detect okay. those kind of situations? Yes. So um, the most important thing is you're not allowed to be over intoxicated. Mm -hmm. That's that's like a fundamental rule, mm -hmm. um, especially in my opinion, alcohol. Um, it's fine if you drink a little bit, but being drunk on a on a kinky party is. It doesn't fit. It doesn't go. It's it's super important to 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 be aware. Once uh, an, an experience that I saw at Kit Kat, and it was that kind of a case that uh, there was a, a girl like super beautiful, super young, and then she had uh, three guys around her. One guy appeared to be her boyfriend, or everyone thought, and then they were. The three persons interacting, and then there was a crowd like that just gathered to watch. Mm -hmm. One guy, uh, the guy's like who was on top of her, leaves her, and then she tries to leave. I saw the girl, and also another guy noticed that this girl was a bit lost. She didn't know where she was mm -hmm. going. The guy that we thought was her boyfriend takes mm -hmm. her back, puts her again in the bed, and she couldn't like even uh. say anything. Goes back, and then again another three, four mm -hmm. guys went on top on her. This man, who was also a bit suspicious, he tells me, this is not okay. I don't think she's able to consent or anything. Mm -hmm. Shall we do something? And then I went, I said, okay, I I'll go get uh, the awareness team. Uh, they told me to explain the security guy. The security guy, yeah, uh, this is the kid cut. And it was like, he didn't really believe me. I finally convinced him. We went there where the thing was happening. And then uh, the other man has had uh, has a call. Cool, stop the situation and I asked him what was going on yeah she was completely under some effect of substance she was not able to consent or even to talk or anything so I was like that is a very problem um, well there's one there's one substance uh, which is GHB um, also known as uh, roofies or mm -hmm. date rape drugs that is actually the in my opinion the one thing that should absolutely not be allowed on on a kinky party mm -hmm. um if they catch you in kit kat it's a uh, house verbot i've heard of uh, friends of mine who uh where there's a girl and she is interacting with two other guys mm -hmm. and she is talking walking laughing happy and afterwards she has no memory of what okay. of anything mm -hmm. yeah that's 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 where it starts getting creepy so um, it's super important to always watch over your drinks, uh, mm -hmm. to not leave your drinks uh, standing around on the bar or something. But then again, there's other cases of spiking, which uh, I've heard about and I've, I know people whom it's happened to. And it's uh, with a needle. They oh, just, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's they come so, to you and then uh, they pinch okay. you. It's really bad. Yeah. When you are organizing, can you focus on having pleasure and at the same time to be aware of all this stuff or when you organize your full on the uh, awareness um, of the party? I can do both things at the same time. <laughs> I have some practice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's it's very, very important. So going back to the, the situation that you've been describing yeah. and uh, the way that the uh, the bouncers or the security reacted, this is actually one of the points that um, ha the KitKat has been criticized a lot for. Mm -hmm. um, on, on our party, we always made sure that... Um, our our awareness team, which were actually angels, um, mm -hmm. would be instructed to go check on this girl, mm -hmm. to go check, ask her, are you do you want what is happening to you? Mm -hmm. And uh, the few occasions where some situation like this happened, the girl actually said, uh, "No, I'm I'm please get me out of here." Mm -hmm. okay. You know, uh -huh. so it was exactly a situation where. And it doesn't even have to be uh, um, under the influence of substances. It can simply just be that you are completely overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now okay. If you don't know how to react and then you're paralyzed. Exactly. Okay. And that's that's the point. So um, actually, I remember that this was one case where there was a girl who she was just simply overwhelmed mm -hmm. and she was just happy for somebody to check on her and be like, hey, are you are you consenting to this? Do you want this or not? And she's like, no, I don't want this. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a huge responsibility. It it is, and um, 
I don't take it lightly at all. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's also, it's a very important part is of course, selecting the right people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, getting the right vibe going. And, you know, yeah. the whole consent yeah. thing is not so um, difficult. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a question. Yeah. Is it okay for you? May I, can I, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a clear yes or a clear no. Yeah. Um, I've heard, for example, that some people say even that they, I mean, despite this stuff happen, other people have said that in parties like these or in the Kit Kat, they feel even more respected than in a normal club. Mm -hmm. Because in a normal club, guys will just come and grope them or DJ will just start dancing very close to them without any consent or without even talking. It's actually the case that people who go to Kit Kat regularly, mm -hmm. they have a type of etiquette. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so this what you're describing that, uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's male or female or, you know, you always have this odd person that is just like on top of somebody else, mm -hmm. you know, without uh, any, any respect. And um, people who go to Kit Kat regularly or other clubs even, um, they just don't behave like that. So when you do go to a place uh, where something like this happens, you really notice. Do you remember your first experience at a kid, at a kinky party? My first experience. So I I had a work colleague. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually married once oh, for okay. one year and nine days. Um, <laughs> nine days. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I had a work colleague, and she at the time was single and had. Um, and crazy, cool, amazing partner at the time. Mm -hmm. And she was starting to discover all the clubs and Kit Kat and um, House of Red Doors, which is now House of Lunacy. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me about it. And uh, I was like, wow, that sounds good. So I actually went to House of Red Doors twice mm -hmm. before going to Kit Kat the first time. And I remember my first first moment uh, at House of Red Doors in Wilde Renate. Mm -hmm. I was standing in my jacket, uh, everything just coming in in January, waiting in the line of the of the wardrobe when I saw the first, the topic was uh, 20s. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I saw the first um, half naked, kinky 20s uh, dressed people walking down the stairs. And I was like, wow, let me take my stuff out. <laughs> 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 yeah, and... Um, Arriving in, in Kit Kat, um, a lot of people describe it as, as arriving, as coming home, as like mm -hmm. a lot of people have really arrived, like, because there is so, there's, it's, it involves so much freedom. Mm -hmm. And there's also so much honesty in it, you know, because at the end of the day, sexuality is honest. You can pretend to have a sexuality that you don't really have. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's, yeah, sexuality is something very honest, isn't it? Many people say, I go there and I can just transform myself. But then in retrospective, it's like, no, when I go there, I can be myself. And when I go out, then I have to transform in someone else that needs to fit onto in society. The sweet spot is uh, being yourself in the club and also being yourself outside the club. That's where the sweet spot lies. Yeah, <laughs> the hard one. Uh, but that's the hard one, right? When you need it's to fit uh, in certain it arms. takes a moment to it takes a while to to get to that. Uh, but where are you in that spectrum? Uh, I'm exactly in that who I want to be yeah. in the club, outside the club. And um, the thing is that, of course, uh, topics like polyamory mm -hmm. um, are part of my life. Um, at my party, uh, when somebody said to me that they're monogamous, I had this like instinctive reaction of going, security, somebody <laughs> here who's uh, at the wrong party. <laughs> I never did that, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> So it's so, a red flag. <laughs> it's not a red flag. It's just it's hard to go back from having experienced uh, th this kind of freedom mm -hmm. and being able to do it in a, in a positive way, mm -hmm. you know, uh, doing it in a, in a way in which people learn and appreciate and... Um, also take that into their own lives. So you are you're polyamorous, 
or open yes. relationship or what would be your definition? Um, of? Well, the thing is, polyamory can is it's on a continuum. So you can some people uh, use the term polyamory to um, justify the fact that they want to uh, sleep around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then on the other end of the continuum is uh, people who live together in a commune and uh, everybody raises the children together and, mm -hmm. you know, that's like extremes. Um, I think the the most beautiful way is to either have a partner that mm -hmm. is your main partner mm -hmm. or even several partners that... Uh, that's like the next level if you actually manage to have several partners who are even uh, interlinked with each other that's a very yeah. nice model mm -hmm. um but the most fundamental part of it is honesty it doesn't work without honesty mm -hmm. so it takes this whole lying in relationships it completely takes it out and how do you deal with the topic of jealousy uh It, jealousy is something um, the the guy that I mentioned in the uh, when I was talking about my work colleague, mm -hmm. he was the first person. He's a psychology professor, and he was the first person to talk to me about polyamory. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took me two and a, two three years mm -hmm. to actually get to the point um, where I can say I'm not jealous anymore. Okay. Because when he was the first time when he was talking to me about it, and I asked him like 20 questions about it, mm -hmm. um, I was like, "Wow, I would love to be able to do that, but I think I'm going to be too jealous. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine it back then. Yeah. For me now, it's a completely different topic where I am happy for somebody else who gets to enjoy something amazing. Mm, okay, so then you feel like your partner has a very uh, nice experience, and you feel happy for. Exactly. Your partner. It's exactly. good that you experience that, something like that. Exactly. Or, uh, and if you are sure of yourself and yeah. you're you're centered and um, you know who you are and you're mm -hmm. what you're worth, then it's not your partner experiencing something with somebody else doesn't take anything away from you. Mm -hmm. You see? Okay. And that's what that's when 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 it becomes really beautiful. But even if it's uh even if you Uh, don't have one primary partner, but you have relations with um, different people and they are on different levels. You know, you have different degrees of intimacy with different mm -hmm. people. Um, it's very nice and very important to communicate how you manage things, how you live your life. And just so the, if the other person knows, mm -hmm. they can make a decision, a, a conscious decision, mm -hmm. you know. That's that's kind of the the important aspect. You say that in your la in the last party, uh, it was like uh, you, you describe it as a very you said amazing or beautiful uh, orgy. You mm -hmm. said when was your first time you were in one? Ooh, hmm. I think uh, I had a I had quite a fun life in, when I was living in Barcelona. No kinky parties as such, but. Uh, Privately, there was always a lot, uh, a lot happening. So I guess the first experiences were in Barcelona. Okay. And then um, after my very long marriage of uh, one year and nine days, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was single for two years, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where I really started to discover Berlin mm -hmm. and all these incredibly crazy experiences that you get to have in Berlin, and you just. I don't know, you you walk out of a place and you're like, wow, did I really just experience this, you know? Okay. So that's that's where, where it really started. Were like private parties or just like occasions you go to a party and then all, escalate? All of it, and, all of it, all of yeah, it, okay. all of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, a sex positive party and a kinky party and a fetish party, are those three different? Or? Yes. Mm -hmm. So fetish and fetish parties mm -hmm. have been around for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, Torture Garden is a, a London mm -hmm. party that is uh, also happening in Berlin and, and in other places. And it's uh, about 33, I believe, years old. Okay. So it's been around for a while. Mm, 
what is more new, especially outside Berlin, <clears throat> Berlin not, but outside Berlin, is the combination of techno and sex. Okay. So this is this is something new because um, a fetish party does not need techno. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, you don't necessarily even need music. I mean, mm -hmm. um, it's background it's, music, but <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But like the idea of m the majority of people who go to to Kika go for dancing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's mm -hmm. not the best music. Huh? But <laughs> 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 no, it's good music. But <clears throat> If you really want to listen to good techno, it's um, it's not uh, yeah. the, the 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 absolutely best music, but yeah, th this is a this is an, a, a very cool combination. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, and it's something very very from Berlin. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I've taken a, a deep dive into the the club culture itself. Yeah. And uh, of course, I only arrived in 2012 in Berlin, and I was I'd, at the beginning. I did not understand techno. I did not understand Berliners. I did not understand the club culture. Um, you know, I came from Barcelona. Everybody's always very happy, and very colorful, <laughs> very pretty. And then in Berlin, everybody's dressed, uh, um, having a bad mood, face. It's yeah, it's yeah, a little exactly. bit like the shocking. stereotype before Berlin, after Berlin. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was actually I came I arrived in December and I was actually pretty uh, scared in the beginning mm -hmm. because. Um, of course, everybody who's cold was wearing like hoodies. So guys okay. were like wearing hoodies. It just everybody looked like they're, they're some form of criminal or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then I realized it's just normal people, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the thing about dressing in black in Berlin is, uh, yeah, it's, it's just part of it. But I, I mean, mm -hmm. if you try dressing in white, uh, it doesn't take more than five minutes until you're like completely dirty. dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about uh, dress codes and everything, um, why does the outfit matter so much in these parties? Um, there's a big difference between costume mm -hmm. and outfit. Okay. A costume is something that you costume yourself with, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, you disguise yourself with. An outfit is something that brings out who you really are. Mm. And uh, interestingly enough, most people have their Kit Kat outfit. Mm -hmm. oh. And it's always the same. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they wear other things to other parties, but in Kit Kat, they have their Kit Kat outfit. And uh, what makes it interesting is, I always say, um, ideally, you don't have to take anything on or off apart from your shoes, uh, to go from dancing into play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if you have to, like, take your pants off and fold them and take your boxers, yeah, you yeah. know, that's uh, that's not very, very clever. So, mm -hmm. it's the minimum amount of clothes, still wearing what you want to what be wearing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, you want all of the things that you're carrying on you to be attached to your body because you don't want to carry around a handbag or a backpack yeah. or something. You have a very nice slogan that you mentioned the other day uh, in one of your videos. Uh, you said, you come to give, you give to come. Yes. What does that mean? That means that um, many people are very focused on what do I get? Yeah, I want, I want satisfaction. Mm. What happens, um, and that's generally uh, like this in life, mm -hmm. if you give, you get back. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, especially if you're if you have an orgy situation and people start giving each other, they're like, "Wow, I just received this. Let me give this to you." So mm -hmm. they go into this kind of like giving frenzy, mm -hmm. and uh, it makes a party so much more beautiful mm -hmm. than being focused like on your own pleasure. I want to do this or do that. Which is the stereotype that sometimes there is about men, that men, they just want to receive, yeah, receive the pleasure, they want to receive the oral, they just want to whatever, and they don't want to give back. That's sometimes the stereotype about about men. Probably. Yeah, but that's very stereotype. Mm. That's very, very stereotype. Um, 
It depends. I mean, it's also very much depends on on yourself. What mm-hmm. is it you enjoy yourself? You know, some people enjoy giving more than, or, or, or like for example, in the case of oral, some people like to give oral, some people like to receive oral. It, it, yeah. it really depends. Yeah, there's people who their pleasure is on the on giving the pleasure, of course. right? Yeah. Of course. I think that uh, is maybe the best scenario because then those persons will be rewar- rewarded after when they when they make the others feel good. Of course. Yeah. Um, uh, what are the misconceptions or stereotypes or prejudice about this kind of parties? Well, there is a yeah, misconception the the door policies. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm, it's it's true that there are um that is often the case that Single guys don't let get it. They don't let in single guys. Um, sometimes uh, there's also a degree of uh, racism mm-hmm. at the doors, which is not nice. Um, I have not really, but a hey, this is it has happened also in KitKat, of course. But I I do believe that the door in KitKat is a pretty cool door. I mean, in Berghain, they're just like nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in in at KitKat there's this guy who speaks like 27 languages and he's like explaining to you no you can't come in in jeans and next time please don't wear white trainers you know yeah, this yeah. is like the whole night you receive feedback yeah so yeah, yeah. so it's actually not so bad mm-hmm. um the a big misconception is that i believe that you have to be extremely beautiful to be able to go to a sex party mm-hmm. and um those people who have who have this self confidence mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and it doesn't really have much to do with whether you look you know you have like the measurements or whatever it's really about what's coming out of you your aura your aura your atmosphere yeah but that's true because i a friend told me yeah i want to go there but yeah i Uh, my body, you know, it's. Mm. I need to maybe train or lose some weight before I go there. And I told him, "That's no, bullshit. You don't, you That's, don't have to." Yeah, absolutely true. And um, for me, I actually gained my confidence mm-hmm. when I had like twenty five kilos more, mm-hmm. and um, I I saw ladies that were older than me and. Um, chubbier than me and what and they had they were completely confident and yeah. i was like if they're so confident why shouldn't i be yeah, yeah and this is something i recommend to absolutely everybody just have that confidence on the part of the consent part like uh, going a, a, a bit back there what are the best ways to ask for consent when you are in this kind of parties so one thing that i apply um When I, for example, when I want to kiss a girl, uh, especially then, is that I go towards her, but I stop just in front of her. Mm-hmm. And she has to make the decision. Is she going to come towards me and kiss me or is she going to pull back? Mm-hmm. So I give her the time to think about it. Mm-hmm. That's a very, very slick way of uh, of you know asking for consent because she will have made that decision mm-hmm. and she will have had the moment to think do i want it or do i not want it okay um mm-hmm. generally um you obviously go from i don't know kissing somebody to getting more intimate uh, to finally maybe go into uh penetration and at every step you should kind of like check in with the person hey is that okay Mm-hmm. Is it okay? And it's a quick question, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and it's also uh, very important to to you don't just go into uh, never into uh, unprotected sex, but also not into unprotected oral sex mm-hmm. without having a quick uh, discussion with a person. Like, hey, do you get tested? Mm-hmm. You know, and if you there, if somebody answers well, I think five years ago I had like a blood test, and I think they maybe uh, tested for AIDS. Is a different answer than if somebody says, um, "Yes, I get tested every two months. My last one was three weeks ago, all clean." Okay, yeah, that's because a different. I, so. I saw an article today, or well, in this screen of the U-Bahn, uh, mm-hmm. it was saying that Berlin is the place where more cases of syphilis 
uh, exist currently. <laughs> this is why you have to be very, very careful. And this is why um, a condom is only the beginning. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's it's super, super important to also educate the people around you mm -hmm. just to make sure, you know, for example, there's simple things like if you've touched one person, wash your hands or at least disinfect your hands before you touch the next person, mm -hmm. you know. I had a very mm -hmm. funny experience in Kit Kat. Um, uh, since then, I know not to touch the club. Um, there's these bars uh, uh -huh. actually above the bar uh, um, from the main floor. Mm -hmm. mm. And I wanted to go like this, but I touched the bars before. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I have to move my hands and my tongue. <laughs> and since then, I never ever touch Kit Kat again. Um, <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's, it's important. It's important to be very aware of of uh, hygiene and protection hygiene, yes, and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and for for someone who might be listening, or for people who are novice and they and they want mm. to try or they are curious, what advice would you give to uh, these people who have never been there yet but they are curious? Go, just go. <laughs> um, Go with somebody who who can show you, who can take you around. Um, good to remember is uh, that uh, in in the kit, well on te on, te on techno parties in general, um, the only people who wear high heels are uh, men, and they are rocking them. If if a man wears high heels, they're gonna like Mwah, you know, <laughs> but uh, don't go in high heels. <laughs> <laughs> Um yeah just go and and experience it's something you have to experience for yourself and always know that you can say no that you do you are not forced to engage in anything mm -hmm. and um please for the love of uh, uh god uh stay sober or close to sober mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay yeah. It's true. That's yeah. one thing I've noticed. Not a lot of people is drinking alcohol. They just drink one or two beers or a cocktail, but yeah. you won't see um, drunk people. You never see drunk people. When we had drunk a drunk person on our on our parties, we'd be like, okay, go and form the door. I think we have a drunk. Okay, tell the bar to not give him anything more. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but um, no, you, people don't really drink because first of all, you're completely drunk of the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. of of Kit Kat and um it's I at the very beginning I used to just go sit in a corner and just watch the people just walking past because I mean it is it's like a it's, it's like a how's it called like from uh fashion shows like it's a like a circus yeah. it's a circus it really yeah. is <laughs> it is beautiful and it's it's such an amazing vibe and that is true for for any of the clubs really mm, that you don't really need alcohol i mean alcohol is something for getting loose for uh at the end of the day it's a neurotoxin you yeah, know okay. it doesn't make you any more intelligent so it's yeah it's nice to to be conscious and to be aware of what is happening and what's going on and you want to you yeah. really really do after like, going so uh, after uh, so much time that you are going there, do you think that it evolved in a good way? Do you think that it is a uh, stuck in a touristic? Yeah. Touristic. Um, unfortunately, it's very touristic, and okay. it's becoming more and more touristic. And as you were describing before, um, the awareness is not the same as it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, so, a lot of uh, cases do happen where stuff just happens to to people yeah. people get spiked people have bad experiences so yes that it does happen um what i treat, try to teach uh, um the people around me my network and the people whom i party with is how to be safe yourself mm -hmm. you know how to make sure that no matter which environment you're in you things can't happen to you you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think uh, last year uh, somebody mentioned or there was in the news that they will close KitKat. Mm. Do you hear about that? Of course, I, I read it and I, I was uh, I was not in Berlin at the time and I uh, I was very concerned about it. Um, 
But uh, yeah, it was something to do with the rental contract, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> they figure it out. Yes, yes. How do you imagine? How do you imagine your next parties? What are you planning? What are your? <laughs> um, so I have an incredibly nice crowd of people, mm -hmm. and um, it's actually. There's a lot of uh, very intelligent people <laughs> as well. So it's uh, sapiosexual sexual people, which is, uh, of course, a lot of fun. Okay. And it's people who can really enjoy precisely this vibe. And it's a, it's a mix of it being uh, a sensual and sexual vibe, mm -hmm. but because most of them are really techno dancers. So for them, the dancing is, dancing is more important than sex. Like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. so it's people who, yeah, who, and it's a, it's very good DJs as well. I basically went into the, depth of how what an awareness team could do mm -hmm. mm, because you know an average awareness team is standing in the corner you know mm -hmm. making sure everything is happening but uh, what's much more fun is uh, for example having an orgy servant and having an orgy guide and uh, can you describe what an or or orgy servant is? an orgy servant for example is uh, first of all somebody who gets uh, respected uh, but you know if imagine you have a couple in action and uh, the gentleman is uh, working full on and sweating and you walk past and just you know dry his forehead give him some air give the lady some water bring some wow. fruits or something wow. like this yeah like a room <laughs> An orgy, maybe, yeah, or like an exactly. emperor. Yeah, mm -hmm. give me some grapes, a little bit of wit, please. Oh, yeah, but like <laughs> you know, in a nice way, in a nice yeah. way. Nice. Yeah. Was there an experience that changed your life? The Berlin club culture changed my life from the ground up. Yeah. Yeah. This is why I made the the decision to continue making parties. Mm -hmm. um, and this is also why I have spent the last one and a half month going into the depth of uh, what blockchain really is and how everything works and having found a very good combination, a, a sensible combination of uh, the two things. Nice. And that's that's what I'm working on. I was the... Um... Uh, Coco or Constanza from Br Barcelona in comparison to the one in Berlin has um, been the biggest change. Oh. I was always uh, this crazy, I think, but um, I have another level of sophistication mm. nowadays. Mm. Uh, my party style has, of course, changed a lot, um, but. Yeah, I'm very much, as I said before, who I want to be and who I really am. So this is this is a very beautiful thing. It was a great pleasure to have thank you, you here. Thank you so much. And thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing. And yeah, we'll see you in one of the parties maybe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> to everyone who's listening, this podcast, please don't forget to subscribe if you want to hear interesting stories about the people in Germany, in Berlin, and on the, also the culture about this city. You can follow us on... On Instagram, in uh, Guten Tag Podcast. Yeah, and also on YouTube. And yeah, leave your comment. This will make the podcast grow. And see you next time. Bye-bye. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen.